Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and Mark Rosewater apparently two days ago put out a uh, little preview teaser thing like he always does for the Lord of the Rings set. Which is funny because some of the cards are already leaked, watch for that video, but uh, let's dive into it. So first up, we're going to see five different card types get the legendary super type. Boy, just starting off strong with the shocking revelations. I mean, if you think about it, okay, like artifact, duh, creature, of course. Planeswalker, maybe? I mean, I'd like to think no. Land, that's a given. Um, two left. Would it be artifact and equipment? Because that would be artifact equipment. And he said type. I can't imagine enchantment wouldn't be there, but he did confirm that battles won't be in it. And then I think none of the battles were legendary, which actually, if you think about it, makes no sense, logically. But uh, anyway, not in this set. So... Would we get a legendary instant or sorcery? Because that has been kind of a thing in the past, and they were kind of weird and annoying. I believe they did it last in the Dominaria set, and it didn't go over very well. Very unreliable cards. Even in draft, it was hard to count on them, so... Huh. So next up, a decently sized Legendary Matters theme. Yeah, kind of saw that coming. Not really surprised there. It's real hit or miss, but the amount of backlash over the race-swapping, pandering, oh, look at us, we're the white saviors of black people, look what we're doing to help them out. I mean, not hire them, let's not get crazy. We're Watsy, we don't do that. And people are seeing through their crap. I mean, it's 2023, this is the year of people being done with lefties' crap, okay? We let them do their own little weird thing, and now it's gone too far, and the backlash is real. And they cannot afford financial losses, so um, I know that it's the company who now currently owns the Lord of the Rings um, IP pushing this, but do you think Watsy wouldn't have done it on their own? Come on. So I'm sure this set will do legendarily poor, but uh, some people who don't play Magic very often or at all are like looking into this because they're Lord of the Rings fans, but you gotta wonder if that's just bots or fake or hype or marketing nonsense or just three people getting real excited on Twitter or who knows. It's either going to flop or it's going to be amazing. And I really don't know which I'm leaning towards flop after Aftermath, which was horrifically poorly received. There's a spoiler for you. Anyway, the third one he's got is a new non-mana ward... Wait, new non-mana ward costs. Okay, that's probably because there's too much mana in the game and they know it, so that makes sense. The whole, like, you can't target this unless you take, you know, 10 damage or you can't target this unless you discard a card is kind of annoying, but... Uh, some stuff in the Lord of the Rings world is really hard to kill, so I guess it, it suits that, but does it suit the card game? You gotta say, does it suit the card game first, then make it match the lore? Not, this would be really cool to do in the lore, how do we translate it to the game? And then some thing comes out and it's horrifically overpowered. They've made that mistake over and over and over, and I don't think they've learned from it, clearly. So next up, we've got a mechanic returns, but now references a different creature type. Off the top of my head, I can't like immediately come up with a mechanic that does reference a creature type so all right you do you it's probably orcs let's be honest next up a card that makes a smog creature token which better be legendary there was only one smog and why are you reducing him to a token and i don't remember him getting cloned yeah look they got black elves i don't think this is going to stick too close to the story or the lore People are already pointing out just from like the art or some like some little tiny things we've seen that uh, some of the Sauron things aren't exactly accurate to the lore either. Uh, apparently we're also going to see two three color and one four color legendary creature to go along with the five color one that's already previewed. Yeah, we know they're sneaking in commander cards because that's all that sells now. That ain't news. The problem is it doesn't push the set. Even a 10 to $20 uh, like hyper popular rare or mythic isn't enough to push the set. You need the set to sell. We've had sets with 10 killer cards that had an EV of like 120 when they came out, which is below MSRP per box. That's expected value, so the average value of like all the cards collectively on average if you were to open like a million, but then scale down to one box. I don't do them anymore because there's too many card variations and the prices are wrong anyway, so yeah. I can tell right now, I don't think this set's going to be a high value. So there's also going to be a lot of one of creature type matters cards so like tribal but without the support is that what they're a lot of one of creature type matters cards this is just commander horizons well 
provide a bomb killer booster card and then have absolutely no support for it in the set. That is one way to sneak in cards that'll sell in Commander without ruining Standard, I guess. Also, it's already ruined, so... Alrighty, next up we got uh, a Mechanic Returns that I had to fight tooth and nail. Oh, God. To get into the set, it premiered in. Huh. I thought he was going to say that was like a nine on the storm scale that he brought back anyway, because he's been doing that and it's been doing famously terrible. Toxic, absolutely horrific. Literally just storm by another name. It's called the storm scale for a reason. So Mark's obsession, in case you haven't been tracking his psychological downfall, has been, I invented this, it did terrible, and everybody hated it. It ruined the whole set and it's, it's above a seven on the storm scale. But... It's someone else's fault, clearly. So what we need to do is revisit it. Even though the entire community hates it, despises it as a mechanic, I need to cover my ego and go back in time and, like, revise it. We need to do it again, but do it right. Even though it's fundamentally flawed and is never going to work logically, structurally, or mathematically. And then he brings it back, everybody hates it, and then they have to ban it. And then they just don't. Have to and actually taking action are two different things at that company, in case you're new here. So while it could be a mechanic that he fought tooth and nail to get into the set that it first premiered in, it might have been a really good mechanic. Who knows? I don't know. I doubt it. Next up, try and make sense out of this one. A new creature type gets its own equip cost. So equipment that's also a creature? I mean, we've seen that, but like, what would this be in the Lord of the Rings world? Well, it wouldn't be like bestow, because that's enchantments. Uh, I know we've seen stuff that when it jumps off, it's still a creature. I like that double strike red dragon thing. All right, that'll be interesting. And finally, some counters in the set. Burden, Death Touch, First Strike. Remember, counters, not keywords, counters. Which means, you know, First Strike, you can give a First Strike counter to anything, and now it has First Strike. Very dangerous, because it can get overpowered quick. Um, hope counter, which does not represent a keyword. It's just, it's a hope counter. So he's mixing these up a bit. Uh, indestructible counter, that's inherently broken, but okay. Influence, lifelink, lowers stun, of course, verse, vigilance, and plus one, plus one. Really, you had to throw in the plus one, plus one. I'm shocked. Guys, it's going to have plus one counters. Oh my gosh. Sound the alarms. Uh, next, here's some rules text that will be showing up on the cards. Whenever you attack with Mary, as in the name Mary, and another legendary creature. Kind of gives it away there. Uh, another one. Then create a food token for each creature you control. We probably already know from leaks what card that's going to be. Uh, remove an indestructible counter from Arwen. Because of course Arwen is going to be indestructible. And then uh, copy any number of target instant and or sorcery spells. Great. Whenever you draw a card during an opponent's turn, create a 1-1 blue tentacle creature token. That just sounds like hyper control cancer. At least it's a 1-1. And, uh... Before the word token would have been the effect, so it's not unblockable, it's not flying, it's not whatever, but I don't know, we might see tentacle tribal, who knows. <laughs> but then we've got, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 counter on Legolas. So I feel like they wouldn't make Legolas black, as in the mana color black. I have a different opinion on, on the other interpretation of that, because they totally would. So maybe it won't be that bad, but we'll see. Never know. I mean, the way more problematic version of this is whenever a creature dies at all, opponent or yours, draw a card. Yeah, they need to stop doing that. Uh, so at least this is one step down from that. <laughs> a big step. Uh, we got target opponent gains control of target horse you control. Well, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Because it's probably saying something racist. Welcome to Watsy Does Lord of the Rings. I have a sneaking suspicion that the horses are going to be vehicles. So next up we got, when this ability resolves for the third time this turn, Gimli fights up to one target creature you don't control. Probably Storm. Next, you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. I'm pretty sure that's just what they referenced above. It's gotta be the same card. I mean, it could be a different card, but like, geez... That is so astonishingly, stupidly, carelessly overpowered for Vintage Legacy and Commander. All three. There's some stuff that costs 10 to equip. And now, oh, you may just pay zero as long as it's the first equip ability. This better be on like a seven cost creature to keep this out of the range of anything that's playable. If this is on like a three cost, it's banned. 
Just little time traveling message from the future. They already banned it. So next up, whenever you put one or more creatures or counters on Aragorn, put one of each of those kinds of counters on up to one other target creature. And there's those counter types like first strike and death touch or regular counters, any type. It's not real clear in the rules if that's exactly precisely how it works because counters and then like counters are two different things. Unfortunately, they have the same spelling and same words, but I, they might have resolved that because there was a lot of confusion on the older cards when they added some new mechanics in the last couple of years, but I don't know. And then we have the least surprising part, the legendary creature types. They all start with legendary creature hyphen, so I'm just going to skip that. But we've got uh, Avatar Demon, Bird Noble, Halfling Knight, Halfling Soldier, Horse, of course, Kraken, Nymph, Spirit Noble, Spider Demon, and Wraith Noble. Pretty obvious what most of those are going to be, if you know Lord of the Rings. And then we've got some card names from the set. He doesn't usually do this, but we've got Birthday Escape. Please tell me it's like Birthday Pikachu. That would be amazing. Uh, Breaking of the Fellowship. Fear Fire Foes! Exclamation mark. That's the name of a card. Yep, they, I guess, didn't learn from the uh, D&D set. We're naming stuff weird catchphrases instead of, like, it's an object. That went over well. Uh, we got Grand the Gatebreaker. We got Horses of the Brunin. Lembus. Mmm, yummy. One Ring to Rule Them All. Gee, which one could that be, you think? Oliphant. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's, that's, it's like elephant, but they spelled it differently, right? Okay, anyway. Um, second Breakfast, all for that. Uh, and then There and Back Again. Hyphen by Chris Daughtry. Weird, I didn't know they were doing a Universes Beyond tie-in inside of a Universes Beyond tie-in. Haha, <laughs> it's so unexpected. Anyway, they're going to reveal a whole bunch of crap on May 30th at 9 o'clock. Who gives a crap time and who gives a crap where? Just subscribe to me, I'll cover it, and uh, we'll see if everything leaks by then because we've got more leaks to cover in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Don't buy this racist trash, it's demeaning to black people.